Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to let you guys know that if you would like to support Fork Full of Noodles and DIY socially conscious comedy content, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Everything starts at only $2 a month, so go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to find out all the details, the different tiers, the rewards, and the goals of what you'd be supporting. All right, now let's dive into this week's episode. Just this past August, North America saw one of the largest prison strikes. And no, that's not that all prisons went on strikes and weren't taking any more inmates, which would cause mass pandemonium across the populace, right? If prisons weren't taking any more inmates, the so-called civilized would go nuts, right? Breaking every law that they could. I mean, dudes would be at every street corner masturbating and laughing maniacally. Basic bitches would be looting every single mall that they could find. Alcoholics would be putting their filthy mouths right up to the tap at every single bar. And I'm not saying that alcoholics are the only one with filthy mouths. Okay, mouths in general are, are just gross. Okay, so settle down, you sensitive pricks out there. All right, I have alcoholic friends, so I can make a joke like that. Hell, I'd, I'd break a few laws, right? I, I would just park where I want, when I want, right? What's that? Princess parking? Right on the sidewalk? Don't mind if I do. And then I would tell every single parking authority employee to go fuck themselves and that you can't really own parking spots, man. This is the people's parking spot now. Huh? And then I would spray paint the anarchist A right on the parking authority person's shirt. Okay, so now that we've fantasized on the lack of self-control we'd have without the fear of a prison system and how eerily close to a small-scale imperial manifest destiny it'd be, let's get back to the strike, right? This 19-day strike was organized by prisoners with the help of jailhouse lawyer speak with a list of 10 demands. So let's take a look. So the first one is pretty simple, right? The conditions of prisons should be humane. Yeah. So prisoners knew this could happen anywhere and this is unsafe and we need people to know that the conditions are like this. We saw just last month, 15 prisoners died in Mississippi. Someone lost their life every other day that month due to conditions in the prisons. And it shouldn't be that way. When someone's sentenced to incarceration, they should be able to safely serve their time and have access to the resources that they need to become a better person, to become the, be the person that they want to be. After all, isn't that the point of prison to help someone that's committed a crime find their humanity back, rehabilitate them back into society? Right? If the condition of their removal from society isn't something that you would want, then how could we expect them to function well when they get out of that system? Prisons are often built next to sludge pools that contaminate their food and water supply. Look, I get it, right? Cafeteria food isn't supposed to be all that great, but I don't think it's supposed to be like actual sludge. It's, it's just supposed to look like it. Look, and I went to public school, which some of us thought was like a prison, right? Instead of gangs, you just had cliques. You had the, the cheerleaders, the, the jocks, the burnouts, the kids that like to dress up like their anime characters every day. You know, I, I mean, these were little cliques that were gangs that would have their own initiation ceremonies. But if you actually served high school kids real sludge, the, the gangs would unite, right? The, the cheerleaders would be creating an environmental disaster with how much they'd be puking everywhere. The jocks would be running plays to get to every vending machine and the primo shit that's in the teacher's lounge. And the anime kid nerds would be kamehameha you to kingdom come, okay? The plus side is that the prisoners are probably a little bit more mature than high schoolers. So they decided to go on strike being treated like the sludge that they are fed. And not only is the food and water toxic, so is their environment, 
Right? In, in Florida and Pennsylvania prisons, there was an outbreak of hepatitis C that wasn't taken care of. And Florida particularly hired an outside contractor, and that contractor refused to service some of the inmates. And the Department of Corrections didn't do anything about this. Okay, look, Florida, just because you're shaped like a floppy dong doesn't mean that you have to act like an overcompensating dick. And in terms of mental health, being put in solitary confinement can break a person's psyche. The UN considers that torture, but then again, when has America ever considered what the UN has to say? Right? Solitary confinement only teaches you how to be in a cubicle staring at a gray wall in front of you every single day as you slowly forget the concept of time and become one with a spreadsheet. Okay, so there's no spreadsheets in solitary confinement in prisons, not yet anyway, but you wouldn't want any blatant evidence of the corporatocracy. And the conditions of the prison is what sparked these strikers to mobilize, right? The strike wasn't supposed to happen until 2019, but a riot in the Lee Correctional Facility in South Carolina that left seven inmates dead and even more injured prompted these strikers to move forward. They called this strike and they wanted it to happen for next year. But after the violent massacre happened in Lee County, where prison officials took away prisoners' lockers and they switched up room assignments, they made really volatile and violent conditions for prisoners. Prisoners knew we have to do this right now. This could happen in any prison in the United States. It's so unstable and unsafe in our prisons. That's the, the littlest thing. And it's not a little thing when lockers are taken away, but on the outside, we kind of see it as a little thing. They and the riot happened after access to the inmates' lockers were taken away, uh, swapping of cellmates, and kind of poking and prodding at the politics of prison dynamics. And the guards didn't do much, uh, and they let it escalate before even getting involved. So the conditions of our current prisons don't help these people rehabilitate, but wind them up so tight that they burst, right? From less than poor living conditions to losing what little you have and constantly being pro poked and prodded, this system does little to ensure that inmates are ready to handle society when they get out. Right? Hell, they are barely ready to handle middle school by the end of it. And I doubt that these burnouts would want to hang out with these inmates in this condition. And that, and that is a damn shame because I bet these inmates know exactly where to get some really great weed. The second is a big one. End prison slavery. And a lot of movement has been happening with the man number two, majorly because it has been getting the most uh, press attention and media attention, and people are being more conscious about the fact that they're supporting prison labor. When they go to establishments like McDonald's and Walmart and, and different places that exploit prisoners' labor, we have to understand that these lower prices are due to the fact that, that a huge part of their employment base isn't being paid what they need to support themselves. I mean, prisoners are paid next to nothing for their labor. And this is also a major demand from the Operation Push movement. Right back in January, there was a 30-day prison strike in Florida and end wage slavery was on the top of their list. Okay, this addresses the fact that items in prison are highly overly inflated in price. A $4 can of soup is $17 in prison. I mean, you would think that these wardens are taking tips from bankers. So the major question I'm sure everybody has is, why should we care that prisoners aren't getting paid anything for their labor, right? These are, these are criminals, deviants, despots, pot smokers, and jaywalkers. Why should we care that they aren't getting paid a decent wage? Well, I'm glad you ask. I'll repeat this again. If the point of prison is meant to rehabilitate, then they should know what it's like to manage a budget and make a decent wage. If you, it's important to know the value of yourself so you can learn the value of another human life. But 
then again, that'll mean changing the way we look at our own jobs, right? Perhaps if we knew the value of our work, we'd fight a little harder for the value of labor in prisons. But labor itself is a transformation of slavery, right? CEOs and corporate lords are making 400 times what an employee makes. And in some cases, some of us on the outside are working two to three jobs just to get by. When a society treats its civilians this terribly, it's no surprise that the prison population is given hardly anything for their labor. Organizations like Operation Push and Jailhouse Lawyer Speak advocate for prisoner wage reform so when they leave and re-enter society, they can afford a way to get back on their feet instead of a system telling them to sink or swim. Right? And at the current moment, that's what the system says, and this causes more recidivism. That's when ex-felons commit a crime again that puts them back in prison. I mean, that's what the system says about the when it comes to the job market too, right? I mean, the competitive edge to make sure you succeed and somebody else fails, right? In some ways, the current prison system is just showing us what the corporate world on the outside has to offer since that's who owns the prisons anyway, right? The only difference between getting a promotion in the corporate world and the prison system is that in the corporate world, it's gained through mentally shiving your opponent instead of physically. In Floridian pr prisons, gain time is practice. This is where prisoners work to decrease time off their sentence. That doesn't sound so bad, but when you realize that it doesn't really help anyone serving longer sentences or even life sentences, it kind of sucks. Right, when you get a few years off, when you have 65 years and no parole on your docket, what difference does it make? Right, it's like being stuck in a classroom on the first day of summer and your teacher's like, we're getting out two minutes early. It doesn't matter, it still feels like it's cruel and time has completely come to a standstill. If we paid prisoners a decent wage, then they could buy what they needed to to live comfortably. And if need be, send some money home. That's right. Even though they're serving time, some inmates would jump at the opportunity to help their family. And that's how bad this income disparity has gotten. That even though there are people working two, three jobs, they might still need income from an inmate to be stable. Labor is just transformed slavery. And this is one of the major things the strikes achieved, right? After this was revealed, people don't want to see prisoners being exploited and diminished for their work. The strikes started the conversation for the end of prison slavery. The movement has been happening on demand number two, especially. And that's really with the people. It all starts with the people making the decision, okay, we, we don't want to see prisoners exploited, so I'm no longer going to support this establishment until I see that they are paying prisoners fair wages. Prisoners want to have jobs. They want to be able to get out of their cell and move their bodies and do work that's valuable, but they don't want to be underpaid for it. Just because they're serving time doesn't mean that, they're, that their time shouldn't be well spent, that their time shouldn't, shouldn't um, have value, that they shouldn't have value in what they're doing. The strike also asked for ensuring legal services to inmates, stop the denial of rehabilitation program, and restoring the right for prisoners to vote. Once again, if the point is to rehabilitate, then you should be able to do what everybody else gets to do once you get out of prison. So their voices should count in a world that they are reintroduced to. If not, then the cycle will just repeat itself and increase recidivism. The current system is not about rehabilitation. It's part of the reason why that was even on the list of demands. The current system is about profit, right? The, the prisons are run and owned by corporate sugar daddies and they don't get their allowance unless those cells and beds are filled. Recidivism is what they rely on. It's their bread and butter. They can't keep inventing new crimes to put people in prison for. And with the rate 
that marijuana is getting legalized in this country. They can't keep using that as a boogeyman. So they have to go with the long con and pardon the pun there and psychologically attack the inmates to ensure that they either come back to the system or stay in it. It's like they want people to be addicted to prisons. And look, I don't think our society can handle a prison epidemic right now. And I know some of you out there are saying, well, Krish, this was weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Why talk about it now? I mean, the news cycle is over. We all know prisons are bad now. Well, that's not good enough, right? I don't, I don't want people to just forget about this issue. Just because it's over in the news cycle doesn't mean that the prison industrial complex is. So consider this bringing it back into the news cycle. The main point of the strike is to make sure that inmates regain their humanity. And forgetting the strikes is forgetting that. So this should be on everybody's lips, right? Ex-felons and ex-cons should be treated with the same dignity as everyone else. That's the first step to changing this broken system. Dostoevsky said the degree of civilization in society can be judged by entering its prisons. We should have better prisons. If there was prison reform, maybe we'd get to a point where there was less and less crime. Then when we outgrow a need for a prison, maybe we can ask the man who's on the side of the street masturbating furiously to put his dick away. And... We can finally park in logical areas of the streets without the fear of oppression of rent-a-cops that think that they are the law. It will be the people's parking. That has been your forkful of noodles for this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the, the episode. Uh, we've got a lot more coming up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but if you would like to support Forkful of Noodles, uh, this is what I do full time. I uh, uh, tour with comedy. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian that tours full time and I create comedy content full time. If you would like to support these things, please donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, all of that starts at $2 a month. All of my stuff is going to be available for free. There's very little that's going to be behind a paywall. But if you would like to show appreciation and financially support this show, because uh, it's a lot of work to produce a show like this every single week, uh, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, if you can't support this show financially, I completely understand. Uh, but a great way to help this show is by sharing. Share it with some friends, share it with some enemies, share it with anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, and if you would like to, you can follow me, you can like my Facebook page, you can give this video a thumbs up, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krishmohanhaha, uh, and you can check out my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Washington, D.C., Easton, Maryland, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, San Francisco, California, and Santa Cruz, California, where I'll be opening for my good friend Lee Camp, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, Knoxville, Tennessee, and a lot more. Uh, you can find all of my tour dates at my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. We've got lots more Forkful of Noodles coming up. I'm very excited to be back. Like I said, if you want to support this show, share the hell out of it. Give it a like uh, and donate to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, check out all of the links below. Sign up for the email list to get updates uh, every single week or every single month to find out what's going on with me. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting and sharing uh, to all of the people that are already patrons, thank you guys so much for, for donating. Uh, it, it means a lot. Every little bit helps. But till the next video, uh, thanks for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.